Walter Elwell provides a detailed examination of the authorship and authenticity of the Epistle to the Romans, a foundational text of Christian theology. The Epistle is written in the first person, indicating that the Apostle Paul is the author, as he directly addresses the audience in various parts of the text, for example 1, 5, 10. This personal style of writing aligns with Paul's other epistles, reinforcing the belief that he is indeed the writer. While Paul is acknowledged as the mind behind the letter, the actual task of writing it down was undertaken by Tertius, who served as Paul's amanuensis or scribe. This was a common practice in the ancient world where thinkers and leaders would dictate their teachings or correspondence to a scribe who would transcribe their words onto papyrus or parchment. The mention of Tertius in Romans 16.22 provides a unique glimpse into the practical aspects of how the New Testament documents were composed and preserved. Elwell emphasizes the universal acceptance of Romans as an authentic work of Paul, noting that its legitimacy has never been a point of contention among scholars. This consensus spans across various theological spectrums, encompassing both liberal and conservative scholarly circles. Such unanimous agreement is noteworthy as it accentuates the epistle's established position in the canon of the New Testament. Also, Elwell affirms the special status of Romans in early Christian literature. The epistle is frequently placed at the beginning of collections of Paul's letters, indicating its importance and influence in the early Christian community. This prominence reflects the theological depth and doctrinal richness of Romans, which has made it a central text for understanding Pauline theology and the Christian faith as a whole. The epistle's position at the head of Pauline collections is a testament to its enduring significance and the foundational role it plays in Christian teachings. Moreover, Elwell offers an insightful examination of Paul's epistle to the Romans, focusing on its audience, composition and historical context. The letter is directed to the church in Rome, which Paul acknowledges as a diverse community consisting of both Jews and Gentiles. This composition is crucial as it aligns with Paul's broader theological narrative of salvation, asserting the role of the Jews in God's redemptive plan for the Gentiles. The dating and origin of Romans are intricately tied to historical events and archaeological evidence. Elwell discusses the significance of the expulsion of Jews from Rome by Emperor Claudius in AD 49 and how it intersects with the writing of Romans. The re-evaluation of Festus's appointment as procurator of Judea to AD 56, coupled with the timeline of Paul's journeys in Acts, indicates that Romans was likely penned around AD 54 during Paul's stay in Corinth. This is corroborated by mentions of Corinthian figures like Erastus, the city treasurer, and Gaius, Paul's host in Romans 16.23, along with archaeological findings from Corinth that link to these individuals. The presence of Jews in the Roman church at the time of the letter's composition is a point of debate. Despite Claudius's expulsion, it's conceivable that Jewish Christians were either not targeted by the decree or had started to return to Rome by AD 54. The example of Priscilla and Aquila, who encountered Paul in Corinth following their departure from Rome, illustrates the fluidity and interconnectedness of early Christian communities across different locales. Through this exploration, Elwell highlights the significance of understanding the social, historical and geographical contexts surrounding the Romans. This backdrop enriches our comprehension of the epistle's audience, a blend of Jewish and Gentile believers, and indicates the letter's role in elucidating the universal scope of God's salvation plan as articulated by Paul. Furthermore, Elwell provides a detailed historical backdrop for the Apostle Paul's epistle to the Romans, situating it within the broader narrative of Paul's missionary activities. Paul's connection with the church in Corinth is pivotal, as he founded this church during his second missionary journey and stayed for an extensive period of 18 months. This period in Corinth is marked by significant events and relationships, notably his intersection with Priscilla and Aquila, Jewish Christians who had recently left Rome, and his confrontation with the proconsul Gallio, an encounter that assists in precisely dating Paul's stay in Corinth to around the winter of 49 AD. Following his tenure in Corinth, Paul returned to Antioch, where he briefed the church on his missionary endeavors. Subsequently, 
he embarked on a mission to collect funds for the Jerusalem church, a task he had been orchestrating through his correspondence with the Gentile churches, as indicated in his letters to the Corinthians. However, persistent issues within the Corinthian church required Paul's attention, prompting his return to the city. It was during this period, laden with pastoral concerns and imminent travel plans, that Paul penned the epistle to the Romans. The letter to the Romans is distinctive in its lack of specific address to local church problems, diverging from Paul's usual epistolary style. Instead, it delves into profound theological themes, offering a universal guide for church doctrine and Christian living. This generality might stem from Paul's indirect relationship with the Roman church, a community he did not personally establish. The letter also serves a logistical purpose as Paul communicates his impending visit to Jerusalem to deliver the collection and his subsequent plans to visit Rome seeking their support for his mission to Spain. Thus the epistle is both a theological treatise and a strategic missive, outlining Paul's theological insights and missionary strategies. In addition, Elwell's interpretation of Paul's letter to the Romans dives into the profound theological underpinnings and purposes of the text. Paul's primary aim is to expound on the way God's righteousness is manifested to the Gentiles, a process intricately linked to the Jewish lineage, particularly through Abraham. Paul sees his mission as an apostle, especially his role in integrating Gentiles into the Christian fold as a form of priestly service paralleling Jesus' service to the Jews. This mission is symbolically and practically affirmed through the collection for the Jerusalem saints, wherein poorer Gentiles contribute not out of abundance but as a theological affirmation of Paul's apostleship and the gospel's universality. This collection, though seemingly a gesture of aid, transcends mere charity. It represents a deeper theological truth, the acknowledgement by the Jerusalem Church of Paul's work among the Gentiles and the mutual acceptance between Jewish and Gentile believers. This act is seen as fulfilling Abraham's promise, with Gentiles expressing gratitude for the gospel and Jews recognizing their role in extending God's blessing to all nations. The acceptance of this offering symbolizes the breaking down of barriers, unifying diverse groups under the shared grace of the gospel. Further, Elwell maintains Paul's intent to clarify that both Jews and Gentiles are equally in need of God's grace and atonement, dispelling any notion of ethnic or cultural superiority in God's eyes. The righteousness of God is accessible to all through faith in Christ's redemptive act, honoring the Abrahamic promise. This universality is a cornerstone of Paul's teaching, pointing out the gospel's reach to the Jew first and also to the Greek, and reiterating the inclusive nature of God's plan of salvation. Paul's letter, therefore, is not just a theological treatise, but a call to unity and mutual recognition among all believers, anchored in the shared faith in Christ's redemptive power. Last but not least, Elwell's interpretation of Paul's epistle to the Romans presents a profound exploration of Christian theology and practical living. Central to this exposition is the theme articulated in the first eight chapters, resonating with the quote from Habakkuk, He who through faith is righteous shall live. This statement anchors Paul's doctrine in the prophetic tradition of the Old Testament, repeating faith over law or ethnicity as the pathway to righteousness. Besides, Elwell explicates that the initial chapters 1-4 establish the universal need for salvation, as both Jews and Gentiles are under sin's dominion. However, the atonement through Christ is available to all, demonstrated through the example of Abraham, the spiritual patriarch of all believers. The subsequent chapters 5-8 digs deeper into the life of faith, portraying how believers are liberated from divine wrath, sins hold the law's bondage, and death's finality through Christ's redemptive act. Additionally, the middle section of Romans chapters 9-11 addresses the complex dynamics between Israel and God's redemptive mission. Here, Elwell notes Paul's insistence that God's temporary rejection of Israel serves a greater purpose within his salvific plan, allowing for the eventual reintegration of the Jews upon their acceptance of Christ as the Messiah. Lastly, the final portion, chapters 12-16, transitions from theological concepts to their practical implications. Paul provides guidelines for Christian conduct, touching on social responsibilities, community dynamics, and personal ethics. 
This section underlines the transformative impact of the gospel on everyday life. In some, Elwell portrays Paul's letter as a comprehensive theological treatise that seamlessly integrates doctrinal truths with practical directives. It underscores the universality of sin, the inclusivity of salvation through Christ, and the paramount importance of faith as the cornerstone of righteousness and godly living. In conclusion, Elwell's examination of the Epistle to the Romans attributes its authorship to the Apostle Paul, with Tertius transcribing reflecting common ancient practices. This epistle is universally recognized for its authenticity and doctrinal depth, often leading collections of Paul's writings due to its theological importance. Also, Elwell discusses the epistle's context, written around AD 54 during Paul's stay in Corinth. It addresses a diverse Roman audience marked by the integration of Jewish and Gentile believers, reflecting the interconnectedness of early Christian communities, Historical events like the expulsion of Jews from Rome under Emperor Claudius and the presence of figures like Erastus and Gaius in the text provide a rich historical backdrop. Moreover, the epistle is situated within Paul's missionary journey, particularly his connection with the Corinthian church and his fundraising for the Jerusalem church. Differing from Paul's other letters, which address specific local issues, Romans presents a more universal theological discourse. Furthermore, it outlines Paul's travel plans and his intent to visit Rome, reinforcing his broader missionary strategy. In addition, Elwell highlights the epistle's profound theological themes. Paul's primary aim is to illustrate God's righteousness and the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham, emphasizing the unity between Jewish and Gentile believers. The collection for the Jerusalem saints represents more than charity. It symbolizes mutual recognition and the breaking down of cultural and ethnic barriers, aligning with the gospel's universal reach. Finally, Elwell interprets Romans as a comprehensive treatise on Christian theology and practice. It underscores the universality of sin, salvation through Christ, and faith as the foundation of righteousness. Paul's letter seamlessly integrates doctrinal truths with practical directives, shaping the dynamics of Christian living and community ethics, thus encapsulating the essence of Christian doctrine and the transformative power of the gospel.